So how can you actually live life on your own terms if you don't know what your own terms are? Like how can you earn money doing stuff you love if you don't know what you love doing? How can you earn money from your passion if you're not sure what you're passionate about? Guys, like that is, I understand it's hard, you know, I, I, that is also why I give like one-on-one -on -one coaching, is so I can help people like figure out, okay, what is it that you actually like doing and how can you either monetize it or connect like an existing business model to it so you can sort of design your life around doing more stuff that you love. And that is also the reason why I've been asked by my old like sixth form uh, school to start teaching lessons in uh, or forever, like just for a, uh, a small like, um, I think it's like three weeks, um, start teaching lessons about like online entrepreneurship, do more stuff you love and earn money uh, from your passion. So that I'm like really, uh, like it's a really good experience for me. Uh, I've always had this like goal of doing like either a TED talk or some kind of like public speaking event. So I think that this will be a nice little stepping stone to that. But anyway, I thought while we're on the whole topic of earning money from your passion, why not actually create a YouTube video for you guys on like a couple of misconceptions that uh, you get with like when people say oh yeah you can earn money from your passion stuff like that so without further ado let's hop into it oh and before i forget if you use a discount code youtube literally youtube in capital letters you can get 20 percent off the lifestyle design playbook only limited to like the first 10 people that use it <laughs> What's going on guys? So uh, like I said, I've been getting quite a lot of positive feedback on videos like this, like the presentation form, the long form, where people can actually take notes, you know, see the slides and stuff like that. So I thought I'd continue along this path. Um, and with this video, I want to explain a bit more about how to actually find your passion. Now, I've been getting so many questions about this, you know, people saying like, okay, how you you found your passion, you know, you're earning money, doing stuff what you love, but how do I actually do that? How do I get started? All stuff like that, so I thought, you know what, I'll break it down for you guys. And, um, like, basically, what a lot of people nowadays on YouTube, on, you know, social media, they always have, like, these guides and, like, ebooks on, like, the five steps to do this and the four steps to do that and five tips and stuff like that. So, um, although I do like the whole idea of breaking it down into, like, a couple of steps, I do think that um, for this video, I'm actually going to take it along, like, a different route and I'm going to be talking about... Um, misconceptions of like how to find find your passion rather than like the guides and stuff like that so i say yeah you know there are a lot of guides and formulas floating around on the internet nowadays but uh, rather than adding to the mix i want to discuss some common misconceptions about finding your passion and earning money from it so misconception number one is you only have one major passion now in my opinion this is not true you know a lot of people believe that we have this like predetermined passion we need to uh, figure out and that we need to spend our lives finding it you know find what find out what it is and that is going to be like the be all end all answer to what we need to do in life but like who decides this like there's nobody out there saying that you can only have one passion so i think that there are so many things one can be passionate about and we just need to figure out like what gives you dopamine for example you know um tim ferris he's an author a speaker an investor and he's even, he's even been a wrestler at times so that, as you can see you know like he's got multiple things he's passionate about. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, online celebrity, motivator, um, what else, public speaker, investor, and he's also got you know, his own business, he's a business owner. Uh, who else we got? Christian Guzman, you know, the fitness YouTuber, again, YouTuber, but he's also a business owner, you know, he owns an uh, energy drink company, he's got uh, Alfleet, the gym, and also the clothing company. You know, he's a bodybuilder, or um, not necessarily bodybuilder, what is it, um, physique, uh, competition, you know, bodybuilder, whatever, uh, traveler, content creator, you know, as you can see, he's got multiple things he's passionate about, and, you know, you can like doing multiple things, it doesn't have to be just one thing, uh, but one thing that we do need to understand is that not everything that we like doing can be considered a passion, so basically, when we like doing something, our brain sends like a signal to our body that makes us feel good, and this neurotransmitter is called dopamine, like, as I explained before, and uh, like not everything that can that increases dopamine can be considered a passion and that's why i've divided like this into uh, like various topics into what i've called like the dopamine differentiator so as you see on the left side you've got uh, create and on the right side you've got consume so on the left side you've got like videography photography you know dancing art animation drawing all stuff that uh, we create and that we can be passionate about and on the right side we've got all stuff that like rather than creating we actually consume so like you know, you're on the internet you binge watch shows um you know but even like downloading like um downloading stuff that 
uh, you normally pay for can also like trigger dopamine uh, and you know again that can also be seen as a form of consumption you know video games uh, even memes on the internet you know people spend so many time like uh, so much time on like nine gag and, and stuff like that on reddit and just consuming all these memes but it's not actually like providing any value to them uh, instant food and even porn so there's like a very important uh, distinction you know in order for something to be considered a passion uh, it must come from a form of creation and if it comes from a form of uh, consumption then it's not called a passion it's actually called an addiction so if you actually want to know more about this concept uh, you need to search for the video about passion created by improvement pill uh, basically what they explain is like where dopamine comes from and how it stemmed from like back in the day when we actually needed to like, create our own houses and stuff like that fend for ourselves uh, but anyway like, another way to figure out like what you're actually passionate about is the following is the question what makes you forget to eat and poo so uh, as you can see on the picture you know isaac newton uh, working away on uh, one of his projects and isaac newton actually had to be uh, shouted at by his wife like often uh, to stop working on what he was doing and come and eat some now i know that you now might mention that uh, consumption of the addicting things of the dopamine differentiator like uh, video games that might also forget you to eat and go to the toilet but before you stop playing video games altogether i want you to really figure out like, what is it about video games that you really enjoy uh, and for that i've got the video game delusion uh, which basically means that you need to understand why you like video games a lot as it might turn out that it's not necessarily the video games that you like, but the improvement and the progress rather than like the actual game. And like this was the case for me. Uh, I'm not a big gamer type, but I did love playing FIFA as a kid. And the reason for that was because um, you had the option to like to take a team from like, the bottom leagues of England, uh, like the fourth league, and get them promoted like year in year out, and you know um, uh, build the team up to uh, like a really good talented squad, stuff like that, and finally like, reach the Premier League, which is like the top. Uh, division in England and even get into the Champions League and that was what I was addicted to like I was addicted to like the progression and I still am like in any manifestation progression is like what I always aim for and uh, like, if I figure out like a new concept I want to learn about it and I spend days research like all the ins and outs because I like the progress and as soon as there's no progress to be made I do lose interest so question you need to answer for yourself is what creation so not consumption but what creation gives you dopamine and let's go on to misconception number two is that you have to do it full time and uh, like, no one said that you need to pick one thing and do for the rest of your life and this is what i like to call the life purpose fallacy the idea that like we were born with like a higher purpose and it's it's our cosmic mission to find the higher purpose stuff like that like um i i get so many co uh, comments about like people saying uh, i like comic books but i you know i can't see a way to to earn from this like right now and i think like this is making it far too big and serious you know uh, the kiss concept keep it simple stupid don't say it's like the meaning of life or your reason for living anything like that like in my opinion life has no specific reason and it's simply our duty to give life a reason and i also get like a lot of questions on uh, passion finding from people that like that say like um, I like comic books, but I can't see a way of earning money from it right now. Or, you know, who, who said you need to stop everything and go all in on comic books? You know, I'm, I'm all in for, like, taking calculated, calculated risks, but uh, when I was just getting started, you know, when, 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 when you just start out, you know, you can also have, like, other sources of income, like, until you actually figure out a way to, like, monetize um, comic books in this example. Um, like, an old colleague of mine, when, when I used to still work in the gym, um, he chose personal training because he could actually use that as a stable source of income that he could sort of, like, figure out his own times and he could pay for the bills and stuff like that while also practicing his passion, which was um, in his own garden, you know, gardening and uh, working on his, his little shed and stuff like that. So just to keep this short, focus on your habits and hobbies and make sure that they become a bigger part of your life and just design a life around like doing more stuff you love. And with that said is question number two, is what hobby takes up your most time but in a good way? And even if that is comic books, even if, if that's playing Lego, you know, whatever, you know, just figure out a way to do that more. Maybe figure out a way to monetize it and just work your life around that and work, work your life around doing that more often or more frequently. Misconception number three is it has to be realistic. 
And you know, like I mentioned before, people still have this limiting belief about earning money from doing stuff they love because they automatically think that it has to merely be their full-time income. So uh, taking into consideration that it doesn't have to immediately be an income you can live off comfortably for the rest of your life you know you also need to get your head around the fact that you can't literally monetize anything nowadays there's literally like there's so many youtube channels out there with the strangest content like but it, it's it's what those people are passionate about and it's what those people are also making money off for example um i watched a or fa- i found a youtube channel the other day from i think the guy was called sean woods uh, he's got like almost a million subscribers. It was like 950 or something like that, 1,000 subscribers at the time of recording this. And it was about catching mice in his barn. Like he literally uploads one video a week, which takes him like what, one evening to make, something like that, to edit, to film, stuff like that. And he just creates like or finds new ways to catch mice. And he earns his money off um, affiliate marketing you know, by companies who give him uh, new mice, traps, products, pest control, uh, extermination products. But also off the sheer amount of views that he gets, he gets paid off of AdSense, you know, for producing those, those videos. So he's found a way to monetize catching mice in his bar. Another important thing that you do need to remember is uh, when you're trying to find your passion is that honestly, guys, no one gives a shit. And this can be seen as a good thing, uh, a, a bad thing, but also a good thing. So uh, you can think, okay, well, you know, no one cares about what I'm trying to do and stuff like that. But you can also see it in the way like, okay, no one cares. So I might as well just do stuff that I love doing. And like a big thing, uh, a big fear, what people have is that they think people will laugh at what you're going to do, but like literally no one will take notice of what you're doing, especially when you're starting out. You know, okay, you you might get a few raised eyebrows from like your, your inner circle or your family or friends, but other than that, no one cares. So you might as well just start doing stuff that you love. So with that like real, realization in mind, just ask yourself, what would you do if no one was taking notice? or like a more grim approach. What would you do if you found out that you were gonna die in a year? You know, would you would you worry about what other people are gonna think? Or would you just say, you know, guys, fuck it, let's just start doing more shit we love. And the last misconception is that you need to save the world. So we all have this big like noble idea that our passion needs to make like an eternal impact and it needs to leave like a legacy and you know, all stuff like that. And again, guys, just keep it simple and just see it in the following light. All you need to do is add value to the marketplace. Even if you can add the smallest bit of value with your passion, uh, you know it's already going to sell or make you money. So this can be done in two ways. Um, you can go through the entertainment route. So you can think of okay, uh, you know, create a Netflix series, create a YouTube series, um, make funny funny videos, post them online to entertain people. Even have your own like television program, anything like that, or even like photos. You know, if you if you're really good in photography, that like, that's not going to necessarily add informational value to people but it's going to entertain people in a good way and that is a way that you know you can monetize that or you can go the information route you know in form of digital products uh, workshops coaching courses how-to videos for example um you know say you're really into call of duty and you know for, like for the entertainment reason rather than the progression reason uh, I'm not even sure there's a way to progress in Call of Duty. I honestly never played the game before, but say you're really passionate about that. You know, you can create how-to videos on how to get further in Call of Duty. Um, you know, you can you can start streaming it through Twitch. You know, to get to entertain people. You know, uh, so they can watch it. You know, there's so many ways nowadays to make money with doing the stuff you love. It's um, like the, literally the possibilities are endless. So anyway, um, last question or last question, like last uh, slide, find the problem you care about and start solving it. So, you know, help for my for me, it was helping more people live life on their own terms. And like, honestly, I don't have to get like every single human being to start their own business and start doing more stuff they love. Like I say, you know, I don't need to change the world, but if I can help a handful of people in their own way, just be more aware of like the possibilities and then take action. And, you know, then that, that's a job well done, in my opinion. So guys, that is all I've got for today. Hope you got some out of this video. Uh, Try to keep this video a little bit shorter than all the other ones. But um, again, you know, hope the value was there for you guys. Hope you guys get a bit more of an insight on how you can actually find your own passion. And I hope that like, the, the, the the questions also help you, you know, find your passion. Uh, if you've got any questions for me, you know, please don't hesitate to ask. Leave a comment down below. If you want to see more of these videos, then make sure you subscribe to the channel for more. And thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one.
Gotta do what I gotta do.